Uh, hey everyone, uh, in this tutorial I'll show you how to make um, this uh, shader which uh, can be used to mix uh, two materials together based on the a world uh, normal vector. Um, I'll do this in uh, Godot 3.5, um, but um, the shader also works perfectly fine in Godot 4, you just need some small changes. I'll include a version of both um, in the resources down in the description, so if you just need the shader resource you can just uh, grab it there. Okay, so we're ready to get started here. Um, I have set up a new project in Godot. Um, I've just created a scene here with a world environment, um, uh, just with some tone mapping and a sky and a directional light, just so everything looks a bit better. Um, and I have some assets already ready in here. I have a, a simple uh, boulder model. Um, and then I have um, two sets of PBR textures. Um, so if you want to use these, you can just uh, find them down in the description. Uh, but you can also use your own set of textures or maybe just uh, one of the built-in models if you want. You just need two sets of PBR textures, like at least an albedo and a normal for each uh, of the two sets. So we'll just uh, drag the boulder model in here. Um, let's just uh, reset its transform. Um, and then under Geometry Material Override, we will just create a new shader material. And click on that. And in the new shader, we'll create a new visual shader. Here we have the shader editor. And let's just uh, go back here and let's just save the shader. Um, okay. And to start with, we just need to set up some um, shader uniforms for us to use. So it's uh, just a little bit of uh, busy work here. So if we say texture uniform, and then we will call this one um, albedo um, background. And we need to set this one to color since it'll be the albedo. And I'll just control D to make a copy of that. And the next one we will call uh, ORM. You know, which it will be the occlusion, roughness, metalness texture background as well. And we'll set that one to data. And then we will just create a third one here and we will call that one normal background. And we'll set that one to normal map. Um, so those were the three for the background uh, material. And then we will just uh, copy them and we'll just uh, change the names here to foreground oh foreground okay so yeah so now we have uh, six uh, texture uniforms here that we can use so um, then we also need uh, two float uniforms or scalar uniforms uh, to control the effect with. So here we are. Um, so this one we'll call that um, offset. Um, and we'll use this one to control um, how much of the two textures are getting mixed together. Um, and we'll set it to have a range of um, minus one to one. We can set its default value to be zero, that's fine. Um, and we'll create a second one, which we'll call uh, fade. Um, and we can give that a uh, range of zero to one and a uh, default value of 0 0.1. Um, so this one will uh, control how um, wide the transition between the two uh, sets of textures will be. So at this point, we're ready to get started more properly here. So uh, let's uh, start out by working on this mask that we want to make. Uh, so we want a mask uh, for everything that's pointed up. So we'll do that by comparing two sets of vectors, um, the up vector of the world and the normal vector of the model. Um, and we'll compare them using the dot product. Uh, so uh, the dot product um, takes two vectors and it returns a scalar or a float. Um, between uh, plus one and minus one. Um, and you get a plus one back if uh, the two vectors are the same and you get a minus uh, back if they're exactly opposite of each other and 
um, any value in between, basically, uh, based on how much they differ. Um, so we're going to uh, put the normal of the surface, which is the input set to normal, in, and then a vector um, that's um, one in the y-axis. So that's the up vector. And if we plug that into the albedo, um, then we'll see we get a mask pointing up, pointed upwards. Um, the problem is, if we uh, rotate the camera here, we can see it uh, it follows the view. Uh, so that's not so good. Um, so why is that? So to figure this out, uh, let us have a quick look in the manual here. So uh, we're on the manual page uh, for the shader reference under the spatial shader. Um, and if we look under the fragment buildings, since we are working in a fragment shader here, we can see that the normal um, by default is in view space. So that's our problem because we're comparing it to um, the world up vector, which is in world space. So, um, which is here, right? So, um, how do we fix this? We need to um, convert this world space uh, vector into view space as well. So, we're comparing them both in the same space. And we can just uh, find the right matrix that we need to multiply with to do that. And we can see here that that is the inverse camera matrix. Um, because you can see that's world space to view space transform. Uh, so let's try and do that. So we'll search for um, the transform vector multiplication. Uh, and then we will need the um, inverse camera. And then we need to multiply. And then we'll just put in the that world vector here instead. Um, and we just need to set this to be AB um, 3x3 three instead of um, the normal one, because this is a direction rather than a position. Uh, you need this if you're doing, if you're moving the vertex around, you need this if you're moving something like a normal around. So let's plug this in instead and see how that looks. And it looks a bit different. And now when we're rotating the camera, uh, nothing is happening. So that looks good. Uh, one thing to uh, note is that if you do following along here uh, in good 04, this is called the view matrix instead of the inverse camera matrix. Now to give us some uh, control over this mask, we're gonna use a uh, smooth step function. Um, and this needs this value needs to be plugged into the X instead. Um, so uh, we'll use the, um, the offset here and we will add this uh, fade value. And that'll be this one. And we will subtract. Um, oh, and that'll be H zero. Um, so that's basically just uh, we're just like remapping uh, this on, around the offset value with the with the fade added and subtracted to the two edges. So uh, if we plug this in instead. Um, then if we uh, if we go back to the shader here and the shader parameters, then uh, now we can uh, control this. Uh, we can control the mask. We have a mask. We can control it. We'll actually make the mask look even better in a bit. But first, let's try and uh, use the mask to mix the two materials together. Um, so to do that, we'll just use some uh, mix S nodes. So that are that's um. A mix node where it mixes a vector based on a scalar. Uh, so we will uh, block the mask into the weight and then we'll block the albedo uh, background in here and the albedo foreground in here. And we'll just do that uh, again here. Some, busy, some more busy work here. Let's do it one more time. Oh. Here. And, oh, let's just move, move the mask down here just so we can do this. Okay, great. Everything is connected. Let's try and connect it up. So we will put the albedo in here. Um, so this is the arm texture, so we need to um, decompose that to get the three different values. Uh, so the first one is the 
occlusion. The second one is the roughness and the third one is the metallic. And the normal one we put into the normal map. Um, and of course nothing much has happened yet because we haven't assigned the texture, so let's try and do that. Okay, and that just took it a minute uh, when I was doing that because it was re-importing the textures, so I just did a little skip in the video. Um, but yeah, you can see that is now working. Uh, so we are mixing the two uh, textures based on the on the normal, um, and you can rotate here. But you can see it's a very uh, sort of soft uh, edge. We're not really taking the details of um, the rock normals into account, so that's what we'll fix next. How do we take the normal map of the rocks into account um, when we are finding the off vector here? Uh, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So like if this is good enough for your use case, you can just stop here. But um, let me show you how you go about doing this. So um, I'll need a little bit more space. So I'll just uh, move some of this down a little bit. Um, what we need to do is we need to apply the normal map um, to the model inside the shader. Um, so um, to do that, we need to do a few steps. Uh, first, we need to unpack the normal map. Um, so we need a, well, actually we need a multiplication, well, vector multiply. Um, and to unpack what you normally do is you multiply by two, and then you subtract by one. Okay, and that's the normal map uh, unpacked. Well, at this point, we run into a bit of an annoying issue uh, in Godot, which is that um, uh, Godot doesn't store the uh, C vectors in normal maps, um, and it doesn't do that because then it can save on texture space, and that's fine, but we need the C vector, so we just have to recalculate it. Um, so we can do that uh, using the uh, Pythagorean uh, theorem. Uh, you don't need to know the, the details here, but um, basically, the formula for doing this is the square root of 1 minus uh, x times x minus y times y. So um, in uh, notes, that'll look, let's see, something like this here. So multiply them with themselves, and we'll take a subtract node, uh, 1, and We'll subtract here, and we'll do the square root of that. Um, and that should turn mostly white, and that looks correct. So this is the correct uh, C vector of uh, the normal map, unpacked. So I just put these on a row just so they take a bit less space. Um, so, okay, we have the normal map. Uh, how do we actually apply it? Um, and that's actually... Uh, pretty straightforward. We just need to um, uh, to take the um, x vector here, and we need to multiply that by the tangent, and we need to take the y vector, and we need to multiply that by the binormal. And you can probably guess where this is going. We need to pick the last one. And we need to multiply that one by the normal. Okay. And we just add all these together. Let's see. So yeah, so this will be the surface normal with the normal map applied in view space, basically. Uh, so hopefully we did all that right. Uh, and then basically, instead of plugging in the normal surface normal in the dot product, we'll plug in this one where we applied the texture. And you can see that does indeed look to be working. So if you rotate this a bit, rotate it here looks all correct. 
we can try and adjust uh, values a little bit. I'm really happy with this, but uh, one thing is that it would actually be nice to be able to um, change the scale of these uh, textures. So uh, I'll just add some controls to uh, change the UV size of the two uh, texture sets. Um, so we will uh, add some uh, uniforms, some vector uniforms, and we can call this one um, background UV scale and make a copy of it. Call this one all foreground UV scale. Um, and yeah, we'll give them some default values of one, one, one. Okay. Um, and then we, we just need to multiply these with the UV. Like this and down here. Oh, okay. Um, and you just need to uh, plug these into the background UV and this one into the foreground UVs. Okay, uh, and uh, let's just jump in here and see, and then we we have these now, so we can maybe set the background uh, scale to two and the foreground scale to four, and it just yep gives us a little us a little bit more control. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That is the shader finished. Just to uh, finish up here i'll also show a written version of the shader that i'll include in the in the resources if you want to just use that uh, so um let's have a look here so you can see we have uh, some uniforms for the to control the offset and the fade like the other ones we have uh, the uv scale controls we have the six textures and here we apply the uv scaling here we read in the six textures here we are unpacking the background normal. Here we are recalculating the C value uh, of the normal with the um, square root, like I mentioned before. Uh, here we are applying the normal. Um, here we are creating the uh, up vector that's in view space. Um, and then we do the dot part of calculation and then we uh, uh, set up the controls for the mask with the smooth step. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, we are just um, mixing with the mask and applying um, the different textures. Um, and you could uh, just, if it isn't clear already, you could obviously just do this with um, separate uh, roughness textures and um, ambient occlusion textures and emission textures or whatever you have. Like I was just using the ohm textures here, so I do that part in one go. And here we are. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this tutorial and want to support me in making more, uh, you consider joining my Patreon. Uh, thanks to my patrons, uh, Rotilla, David Masiaka, uh, Andres Hernandez, Mike King, Decaying Deb, Alex Litinsky, Ilias Eskelinen, Joseph Catronbone, Winston, and Space Chase Zero. Thanks, everyone.